Hello everyone, welcome back and in this video we will see how to use the path variable annotation and request param annotation in order to handle path variables and query params. So first let us see what is a path variable. Suppose we have had a URL already defined which as localhost colon 8080 slash sample and suppose you want to pass the data uh, in the URL itself. Let's say you want to pass the ID. For example, if you are passing the ID as 100 for a profile or something, then you need to receive this value 100 in your um, function. That is the request mapping function, right? So how do we achieve that? That can be done with path variables. And remember that this value is not going to be static. It will be dynamic. So let's see how this can be done. So instead of 100, we will pass the name, the dev capsule here. And inside our spring uh, rest mapping function, for the post mapping, we are going to add the path parameter. So we have made this post mapping annotation receive a path parameter and we are passing name inside it so name is going to be the reference for the value that we are going to receive after sample slash so this can be like sample slash profile slash name right so the url will be sample slash profile slash name right and name is going to be dynamic. So we need to map this name to a variable, right? So in order to achieve that, for the allowable post endpoint function, we are going to add another parameter at path variable. And define a name for it. Let us give it as name itself okay and we have to give the type for this it's going to be string now we have the name variable declared so in our hello message instead of adding the name from the body payload we will use this url path variable now we are done with our coding let us test it now Let's restart. After restart, let's hit the URL. There is some issue we have right now. Yeah. So we just define the URL as sample slash, profile slash, and the dynamic variable. So sample slash, profile slash, and the variable. Now we see that the dev capsule that we are passing in the URL is being referenced that. Let's say I change this to Superman. Now we see hello Superman. Hence the data from name here is not being referenced and the data from the path variable is being referenced. So next thing that we saw is we are going to pass query params. So what is a query param? So query param is a way for transferring data like how we did in payload. But here the data will be of smaller size and it can be bookmarked in the browser. So that, so that it comes in the URL itself. So after any URL, if we add a question mark and if we are going to add key value pairs, suppose let's say, I'm going to add a key name and we are going to give some value to it, Batman. Now this is a key value pair and then we can put a comma and we can give another value, age and give it 30 and now when we hit the request. It works in the same way, we get Superman here, but now we are going to 
make the application use the value from query parameter. So how do we do that? So in order to achieve that, we need to add another parameter to our request mapping function. So for that, I'm going to add another parameter. It's going to be of type. What is the type? So we already defined the type, right? Sample payload data. So this will be sample payload data. And we will name it query data. So now we have to annotate this to receive the query parameter value. So for that, we are going to use the request param annotation. So now the data is going to be mapped into query data. And we will see the age being changed. So it's a bad request. Let's see what has caused this error. Okay. Required request parameter query data for method parameter type is not present. Okay. So we see that it is requiring the query data data in the URL. So we just did a mistake. We should not define like a request body. We have to define this as separate variables. So each key value pair should be defined as a parameter in the function. So inside this, we are going to remove the previous declaration that we did as request param. And now we are going to define it as a string and we will give it query name as the name of this variable. So now query name is going to have the name from the query param. Let's replace name with query name and then we will receive the at request param h Let's name it query age and its type is going to be int. So we will use this query age in the place of data dot age. I'm saving it. Let us restart the application and now we will see that the data gets appended in our response properly. Let's run it and we see bad request again. So what is causing the issue? So the issue is query name for method is not present. So why is that? Because we are not mm, giving the name for this mapping. So we need to define the name. For example, here we have said query name, but in this, we are just saying name. So what we will do is for age, we will change it to query age, but for name, let's have it name itself. And we will handle that name mapping inside here in the function. So for that, we need to do something like this so what we are doing is 
for the request mapping annotation we are passing a parameter and it is going to be the reference to the name of the key in the query parameter so now the request param will be automatically mapped to this let's see the magic working now when i hit the request again we see a bad request and this is from query age so we have done some cosmetic adjust and adjustments in order to have the code clear so let's see how this mapping happens now and we have figured out the issue as well so the issue is not in the code but it is actually in the request that we are mapping so here it shouldn't be a comma it should be an ambassador so the key value pairs has to be separated with ambassand. So now when we make the request, we see we get the data properly. So Batman and 30 has been mapped from query parameter. Hence, we have implemented the query parameter functionality. And now let us try to uh, take the name from query parameter if it is not available it should take the name from request body let's see how we can achieve this in order to do that we have to change the type of query parameter to optional so optional is a java 8 feature and here query name we are going to define it as query name dot or else get and then we need to define a lambda here so we will give um data dot get name so what this will do it will check for query name if it is not available it will get the name from payload now let's restart let's hit the server when we have the query name param near batman we have that and when we remove that we have the dev capsule from body params data and if we don't have here also then we can refer to the path variable so this can also be achieved so we have saw how to use path variables and query params and make the maximum use out of receiving data from a client to a server thank you for watching this video